We're back. Thanks for staying with us. Joined now by Dr. Dwayne Irvin. He's the CEO of Novaxis Global Incorporated. XSNX is a stock symbol. Dr. Irvin, welcome to the program. It's good to be here. Nice to see you, Don. Now, Novaxis Global is a medical company concentrating on cancer and neurological therapeutics and devices. Can you give us a general overview, please? Absolutely. We're a cancer therapeutic and diagnostic company. We start off with our initial assets coming from a company called Stemvax Therapeutics. They have technology coming out of Cedar sinai Medical Center Department of Neurosurgery, which is a third generation immunotherapy to treat brain cancer. We try to make use of the patient's immune system to respond to cancer cells in a way in which they normally wouldn't to attack and kill the cancer cells and or eradicate the cancer cells. This is relatively novel technology that hasn't come to market yet for, for brain cancer, but it has come to market for things like prostate cancer, breast cancer, and skin cancer. Um, so up to date, brain cancer has had no real change in survival, despite the advances in chemo and radiation. Nonetheless, immunotherapy has shown some improvement in survival in preclinical studies in some human clinical trials. We have a third generation immunotherapy to treat the most common brain tumor, glioblastoma, which has a 15 month median survival post diagnosis. And we, that's not changed in 50 years, despite the chance advances in chemo radiation. However, we think with our technology and based on first and second generation uh, performance, that our third generation immunotherapy will help improve survival and progression V survival for these brain tumor patients. Well, your brain tumor treatment is on an FDA fast track, so to speak. Can you give some details about that? Absolutely. Normally, when you've completed preclinical trials, you do human clinical trials to see if your drug can come to market. You have to go through three phases uh, regulated by the FDA for safety and efficacy for your drug. Most companies start by doing a phase one safety trial, but because we have a third generation technology, we don't, the FDA suggested that we can jump straight to a phase 2A because our changes in the technology is all done outside of the human body and shouldn't change the safety profile. So this is relatively huge for us because we get to skip many years performing a phase one clinical trial and save a lot of millions of dollars not having to do that trial and jump straight to a phase 2A to look at the efficacy of our drug. Is it unusual for the FDA to take such a step? It is a bit on the unusual side. But however, most companies will come to the FDA with a brand new drug that hasn't been tested on any level in human patients. However, in our case, we have a third generation. It's sort of a tweak, if you will, an improvement upon the first and second generations. And so this in and of itself can be a bit of a unique situation to come to the FDA with a te technology that's really a third generation or an improvement upon the previous drug that was submitted. And for that reason, we're also asking the FDA for orphan drug status. This too will help us move faster through the, the phase two and the phase three clinical trial to try and bring this drug to market. Can you, can, can you share a bit about your background and that of your key team members? Absolutely. So I have a scientific background. I was a professor for almost 15 years. I worked as a professor at Cedar sinai Medical Center. I was a brain development uh, professor, if you will. A lot of my research focused in on how brain stem cells build brain tissue and how they uh, repair brain tissue. I um, also went on to Sweden after doing a postdoc at UCLA Med School focusing in on how brain stem cells can make the cells lost in Parkinson's disease. So we were the first to generate protocols to make dopaminergic neurons from brain stem cells. Uh, after this, I went on to Cedar sinai where I took on a professor position to introduce Parkinson's disease research to the department, but also to add strength to the brain tumor technology that, that the department is very well known for. Neurosurgery at Cedars is ranked 12th in the country and the, the hospital's ranked eighth and we're considered of the top five or so working on brain tumors. We also have a fantastic CFO, Neil Laird, who has come on board just recently. Uh, he spent over 20 years in the industry as a CFO and or CEO, working in public and both private companies. Furthermore, he has a lot of experience with medical devices and uh, drugs in the market. So we're really excited to have him on board. We also have a fantastic advisory board that's growing as we grow. Uh, we have experts that come directly out of NIH director's office, uh, individuals that have handled portfolios, uh, 
medical device portfolios of over a billion dollar company. Uh, we have also neurological uh, experts in the field as well as brain tumor experts in the field and people who know how to commercialize products and, and get insurance coverage once we come to market. So we feel like we have a great team that's constantly growing as we grow. Well, speaking of growth, your growth strategy includes acquisition. What specifically is the t- company targeting? Yes, we want to focus in on advanced platform technologies in the cancer space. We look at both pharmaceuticals uh, as well as uh, medical devices and diagnostic materials. So we started off with a therapeutic asset, and that is this immunotherapy to treat brain cancer. But we're also looking at medical devices that might help improve surgical outcomes for brain tumor patients, as well as diagnostic tools that can help us diagnostic, diagnose brain cancer. Currently, there is no real diagnostic tool for brain cancer. We think that if we could get to these patients sooner and identify their cancer sooner, we have a better chance for better outcomes. So we're very focused in on advanced technologies in this space. Well, Dr. Evan, why is this a good time right now to take a closer look at Novaxis Global? Well, because we're very early stage and we have a great asset. We've just gotten ourselves uh, getting going as a public company and we haven't really put forth a strong IR campaign. So our, our market value is a bit on the undervalued side. But again, we, ex- we expected this in the very early stages, which is where we are right now. And we think that investment into our company right now will yield a lot of fruit down the road because we are at such an early stage with such a fantastic asset. Stock symbols XSNX, Novaxis Global Incorporated. Dr. Irvin, fabulous interview. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to have you. Good to see you, Don. Thank you. Take care.